Hello everyone and welcome into another edition of the Mercer County Football Show here on WBCD1490.com. My name is Mike Samsel, George O'Gorman with me as always as we tune up for week two for most teams in the Mercer County football season. A couple of strong games last week in Mercer County and some of the teams that we expected to be strong showed they were. Yeah, I, I expected uh, the Nottingham game to be a little bit closer than it was when they played at Heightstown, but you know, John Adams and his boys uh, really were in mid-season form for their season opener and rolled over to Heightstown Rams and uh, you know, I still think Heightstown's going to have a pretty good year. Uh, Another game that I saw was a little bit uh, surprised that West Windsor, despite a lot of you know key graduation losses, mm -hmm. hung with Trenton, uh, gave up 14 points on Trenton's first two possessions, and ended up to be a 20 to nothing Trenton win. Mm -hmm. And I was impressed with the Tornadoes; they really didn't didn't beat themselves like they usually do with a lot of uh, penalties. In fact, they only had one penalty in the first half. That uh, I can't remember the last time that I saw a Trenton team go to a half and only commit one penalty. They ended up having uh, six of them for the game, mm -hmm. but uh, the Tornadoes ran the ball well with uh, Tremaine Nieves. Uh, I think he had close to 100 yards. Ryan Wharton, uh, excellent young, not young, he's a senior, but I mean uh, excellent speed. Mm -hmm. And once he gets into the open, uh, you know, he can turn it on. West Windsor uh, South, uh, under Skip Edwards, hung with the Tornadoes and uh, really played a pretty good game. It was a weird game because they stopped it with five minutes to play. After when Nieva scored his uh, third touchdown, he scored all the points for the Tornadoes. Uh, there was a couple of lightning strikes, so the referees cleared the field, cleared the bleachers, and about five minutes later, the teams were shaking hands, and I couldn't believe it. Then I went over, and they had called the game. Right. Uh, I guess they figured that with the... Uh, and it, it was a, there was a storms approaching, and it was getting dark, and so I guess they figured with five minutes to play, you know, the chances were that, Heights, uh, that uh, South wasn't going to come back. But uh, that was an impressive game, impressive for the Tornadoes, and not bad for uh, West Windsor South, who uh, now they go to Steinert this weekend, so you know, that should be an interesting game. The Spartans are coming off a week off. Yeah, they're coming off an off week. Another team that I thought had a very good showing was uh, Dave Cobalt's Hopewell Valley team, 34-7. Yeah. to They beat the Hamilton Hornets. We heard a lot of hype, if you will, around Hopewell Valley this year, and Hopewell Valley really came out and played well. Hopewell Valley did play well. I thought that would be a good game. I figured Hopewell would win it. I was surprised at the margin that they won by at Hamilton. That's uh, that's a little bit of surprise for me. Uh, this week, Hopewell's got uh, another interesting matchup coming up this week. I think they play West Windsor North, is it? Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I saw one schedule that had the game listed at 7 o'clock Friday night. Another schedule has it listed for Saturday afternoon, so we'll have to, uh, you know, clarify that. But, uh... It'll yeah, be sometime this week. Hope well, uh, you know, Todd Smith's got that program. I don't want to say has the program because Dave Caldwell's done an excellent job with that program since he started it about uh, seven or eight years ago. But uh, Austin Fellows really threw the ball well. They got uh, Mike Geis, who was one of the uh, players of the week from Hopewell Valley, had an outstanding game. So, uh, you know, Hopewell Valley, uh, they could be a uh, serious contender as some people thought they were going to be very good, this could be the best, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to say they're going to be the best Hopewell team ever. Right. They've had some good teams, but this could be a very good Hopewell team, and maybe they can get to the playoffs because they've missed it. The, I don't think they've ever made the playoffs, Hopewell Valley. Mm -hmm. This would be good for them to make it this year. Some of the players of the week around the area is voted on by the Mercer County coaches, part of the 12th Man Touchdown Club. Uh, Mike Geist was the offensive back of the week. Seven receptions, 191 yards, and two touchdowns offensively. Damar Levy played really well on the line for Trenton. Uh, Terrence Grissom, free safety, 11 tackles, one interception, a sack, and a fumble recovery as Ewing scored the win over Cinnamon. That's, That's a good win for Drew Bessler. It's an excellent win for Ewing. Now, if they can continue to build on that momentum that they have, uh, they're back into Burlington County again this week to play Pemberton, but that's a very good win for, uh, you know, for the Ewing Blue Devils to go down to Cinnaminson, which was the defending co-champ in their division of the West Jersey Football League. They had shared it last year with uh, Delran, and for Ewing to go in there and come away with an impressive win, that's really says something for Drew Bessler's ball club. Uh, you know, they won 13 to nine over Cinnaminson. Cinnaminson comes back this week to play Northern Burlington mm -hmm. and uh, at Cinnaminson, so that should be an interesting matchup. And Ewing, as I said, Ewing has an excellent uh, opportunity to go to Pemberton 
So maybe the Blue Devils can start 2-0 and, uh, you know, hopefully be a contender in that division. Lawrence, another team with a strong showing, 40-13, to and they have the defensive lineman of the week in Jordan Fleming, five tackles, including three sacks as they got the 40-13 to win over Pemberton. Again, we're expecting some big things out of Lawrence this year. Out of Lawrence, and you've got an excellent, uh, you've got an excellent running back in Samai Mitchell. You've got an excellent running, running game in uh, Cameron Kitchen, and uh, of course the quarterback Nick Falkenberg. Don't don't forget him. He's an excellent, uh, you know, quarterback. He can throw the ball. They've got a lot of weapons on that Lawrence Cardinals team. Special teams player of the week was Saquon Hampton, a 74-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against Heightstown for Nottingham. We know how good Saquon is. He's heading on to play his high school fo or his college football at Rutgers University next year. We'll step aside, take a quick time out here on the Mercer County Football Show. We'll come back on the other side, finish off the scores from last week, and start previewing this coming week here in Mercer County. Mike Samsel, George O'Gorman, we'll be right back. St. Francis Medical Center ranked number one in Mercer County for patient safety. A recent article in Consumer Reports titled How Safe Is Your Hospital ranked St. Francis Medical Center in the top 10 hospitals in New Jersey for patient safety, and it was the only hospital in Mercer County to reach the top 10. This article from Consumer Reports provides a ranking by state in the categories of infections, readmissions, communication, and scanning, and Consumer Reports ranked St. Francis Medical Center in the top 10 in all of New Jersey. Jersey for patient safety and the number one hospital in Mercer County, St. Francis Medical Center. Welcome back to the Mercer County Football Show here on WBCB1490.com, Trentonian.com as well. That's the Trentonian Shore Joe Gorman. I'm Mike Samsel from WBCB Sports. Taking a look at the rest of the results throughout the county in the area as Bordentown upended Robbinsville 33 to 18, Burlington City 44, Riverside 14, Florence 34 7 for New Egypt, and CB South 47 37 over Notre Dame. Any of the results strike you there? Uh, I was surprised in a way, uh, probably two results that uh, I knew Bordentown was going to be pretty good this year. I'm surprised that they handled Robbinsville relatively easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Notre Dame's defense, I know Chappie, from uh, reading the accounts of that game, wasn't happy with the defense that Notre Dame played uh, because of the fact that, you know, and, and they did it without uh, Simmons, I guess, the big running back from uh, CB South. He got hurt on, in early in the game. Yeah. And they still were able to put up 47 points. That's interesting for Notre Dame because the last four games, going back to three games of last year and this year, Notre Dame has given up. Uh, a ton of points. Mm -hmm. You did the game in the playoffs last year where they got beat 64, was it 64 63 nothing? 63 nothing. 63 yeah. nothing up at Bergen Catholic. Then they came back and lost that game. It was a real, really close game the day after Thanksgiving to Nottingham. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then this year they opened up giving up 47 points to CB South, which, if I'm not mistaken, that, that should be CB South's second win. Yeah. Because I think they had beaten Council Rock South in Correct. their opener. Yep. But uh, now Notre Dame gets back into the CVC where they're, uh, you know, very familiar with it. And uh, playing Hamilton on Friday night over there at Monsignor Walter Nolan Field. And, uh, you know, the Irish, I think, are uh, hungry for a win. You know, they got Rob Coven who can throw the ball. And they got uh, Nico Sparrow and Lorenzo Bryan who can run the ball. Mm -hmm. And they got a good defense, too. So it's going to be interesting to see how they handle Hamilton. I thought Hamilton would have... Uh, been a little bit closer with Hopewell Valley, but maybe Hopewell Valley is even better than we thought they were going to be. Yeah, it's very possible. Northern Burlington 35, Princeton nothing. No upset this year. No, that was an interesting game because it did start on Thursday night uh, prior to the, uh, well, I guess they started just as it was starting to rain, and uh, they ran the ball on the, they fumbled the opening kickoff, mm -hmm. and then Northern Burlington scored on the first play, and... Uh, you know, went on to, they, they stopped the game, came back and did it, you know, resumed the next afternoon at 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And Northern Burlington uh, went up 35 nothing in halftime, and then, of course, they kept the clock running. And Princeton really didn't uh, didn't have much chance to move the ball. They, they did start to move the ball better in the fourth quarter. Uh, they brought the young sophomore quarterback in, uh, Beamer, Dave Beamer, I think his name is, and he threw some ball. 
to a nice cup of nice pass at one of the Hellstrom boys. There's three Hellstrom brothers on the Princeton team. Mm -hmm. Princeton only had 23 kids. Right. And one of them got hurt early in the uh, first half. So, you know, they were really shorthanded. Uh, Smallsman, who was a quarterback, if they can play, maybe they'll play Beamer at quarterback and let Smallsman run the ball because they really don't have a lot of weapons. Will Harrison can run, but he's a, he's a relatively small kid. Right. But they got an opportunity this week to, against Heightstown. Uh, that could be an interesting game on Saturday afternoon, Heightstown at Princeton. Yeah, finishing off the scores from last week, Burlington Township 23, Willingboro 6, Nottingham 48, Heightstown 7. No real surprise there, except you know Nottingham kind of kept rolling on. Maybe we expected that game to be a little bit closer, but Nottingham looks to be as strong as advertised. And out in Utah, Alta handled Allentown by a final of 44-7. to seven. Quick turnaround for Allentown. They're coming back home, back at it on Friday night. As they will be hosting. Or they'll let's be playing see. What do I Egypt. have it here? They'll be at New Egypt. At New Egypt. Yeah, New quick Egypt, turnaround. Uh, New Egypt lost its opener to Florence, but that's no surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that might be a little bit closer because uh, Joe Frapoli's flashes are uh, always talented despite losing some uh, some key players. And uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the kid that uh, was their leading rusher last year who pretty much gave up football to concentrate on track. Uh, he's one of the top javelin throwers, not only in New Jersey, but in the nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, New Egypt, uh, you know, in Florence, that was kind of expected. Now it'd be nice to see what Florence is going to do on Saturday morning when they go in to play at Lawrence. Yeah. As we said, Rob Radis's ball club, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of depth, similar to Florence. Mm hmm but uh, their first team, their first group of kids is very talented, so that should be an interesting matchup on Saturday morning. I'm hoping to get over to see that game. Rancocas Valley will be on a bye this week. You know, on Friday night, we'll see Burlington City taking on Robbinsville. That should be an interesting game. Game we'll have for you on the WBCB Sports Network coming up on Friday night. We'll be Hamilton at Notre Dame, yours truly, and George will be over at Notre Dame. That game will be starting at 6.45 on 107.7 The Bronx and 107.7 TheBronx.com. Nice barometer for both teams. Yeah, it's a very nice barometer. It'll give an op the Irish an opportunity to uh, get back on the winning side because now they've lost uh, their last four games in a row, I guess you could say, and uh, they got an opportunity to get back on the winning side against a, uh, you know, a Hamilton team that looks like it might be struggling this year. Uh, mm hmm you know, Tom Hoagland's club, uh, they're relatively young, but uh, the Irish, you know, it'll give them some momentum, get back home, where they really haven't played, I guess, since their last, uh, next to last regular season game a year ago. Right. Prior to uh, their playoff game. Mm hmm And uh, they'll come back, and of course, they got a big matchup coming up uh, uh, next weekend where they host Rancocas Valley. Yeah. Rancocas Valley has the bye, and... Then they'll go to Notre Dame a week from Friday night, so that should be a one of the key games in the uh, in the Colonial Division of the uh, West Jersey Football League. A lot of people are picking Rancocas Valley uh, to be one of the best teams in South Jersey. They're already ranked number six in South Jersey coming into the season, mm -hmm. and uh, RV has always got some talent. Uh, they just you know things go wrong and you know they kind of fall apart, but. Uh, you know, RV with that bye this week, uh, I'm sure the, the scouts will be out there. Uh, Dan Hausman, their coach, will probably be out there in Notre Dame on Friday night scouting up the Irish. I remember the last time they played over there in Notre Dame, uh, the Irish had gone ahead. Mm -hmm. Mike uh, Young kicked a, like a 45-yard 45 45 field, field goal. And what was it on the uh, ensuing kickoff or, or the next play from scrimmage? Uh, Notre Dame defense kind of fell asleep in the secondary and, Heights, and Red Hogan's Valley completed like a... 50-yard pass to win the game. Yeah, it was a Hail Mary at the end of the game. But, I remember uh, that. Yeah, that. That should be an interesting matchup. And one of the games, as I said, probably the game of the, uh, what shapes up to be the best game of the weekend in uh, in Mercer County is Trenton playing Nottingham. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Trenton, they've got some horses in there. Uh, Tremaine Nieves, as I said, plays outstanding linebacker. And I was surprised, a, a kid as big as he is, on his first touchdown, he broke off the right side, mm -hmm. got past the, the uh, linebacker, and was gone down the sidelines. And I didn't realize he had that kind of speed. Yeah, We know Ryan Wharton had the speed. I was surprised that uh, 
Tremaine Nieves had that kind of speed, and uh, he just powered his way, you know, for a, uh, a good game on both sides of the ball, and he's got some big blockers out in front of him. DeMar Levy, uh, J. Ron Brown, I mean, he's got some big 280-pound guys who can move. Yeah. And when you get them guys leading your, uh, leading your runs, and you're coming through going about 250, I mean, that, that could be an interesting thing. That's going to be a big test for the Nottingham uh, defense, which I remember last year Nottingham played at Trenton, and uh, although they won the game, I think, uh, by two touchdowns, that was a relatively close game. So this will be a big test for, uh, for the Tornadoes. Uh, we'll see how the Tornadoes, they can grow up a lot in that game. The big thing is, from what I saw last week, they didn't really hurt themselves with penalties. Right. You can hear that game on the WBCB Sports Network on 1490 AM and WBCB1490.com. Vince Reed, Chris Armour venturing over to the Jersey side of the river. We'll have the call in that one. We'll step aside, take a quick timeout here on the Mercer County Football Show, come back on the other side, finish previewing the games, and wrap it up. It's the Mercer County Football Show here on WBCB1490.com. We'll be right back. The Gator, Jerry Blavitt. And are you looking for the best local news coverage, the best sports coverage, both Philly and New York sports, and the best high school coverage? Then look no further than the Trentonian. It's the only local newspaper covering Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties seven days a week. No one does it better than the Trentonian. It's coverage you can count on seven days a week from Levittown to Burlington, Hamilton to Florence, Trenton to Newtown. It's the Trentonian. Back one final time here on the Mercer County Football Show on WBCB1490.com. George and I are able to be with you every week thanks to our friends over at the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton, and also the Trentonian. Check them out online 24-7 at trentonian.com. Taking a look at some of the games we haven't mentioned so far. Friday night, Northern Burlington will take on St. Minson in a Burlington County matchup. Burlington Township will take on Holy Cross. Allentown will take on New Egypt. Allentown chance to get back on track if they're rested coming home from Utah. Heightstown and Princeton, that game will be on Saturday afternoon. And also on Saturday afternoon, a game you'll hear on the WBCB Sports Network over on 1077 The Bronx and 1077 thebronkcom West Windsor Plainsboro South will take on Steiner. Good chance for one of those teams to get a win. Uh... I would think right now, I mean, I don't know what Dan Caruso has done with his ball club after that week bye, mm -hmm. but uh, I got to I gotta have a feeling that uh, West Windsor South can probably uh, win that game. Uh, maybe a little bit closer yeah. than, uh, you know, anticipated, but uh, Chris Scanlon does an excellent job playing defense and also as a, uh, as a wide receiver for that uh, West Windsor South ball club and. Uh, you know, Nick Benfer, who was a starter last year, uh, he's been a three-year starter for uh, Skip Edwards' ball club. Uh, he he's a he's a tough running back, and uh, we're going to have to see if Steinert's defense can handle him because uh, you know he can break a couple of runs. And again, you know, because the numbers are not great again at West Windsor South, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of kids are going both ways. Right. Three games for you on the WBCB Sports Network this weekend. Friday night, George and I will be with you over at Notre Dame High School as it will be the Hamilton Hornets taking on Chappie Moore's Notre Dame Irish. Saturday, coming up 11.45, will be the Trentonian pregame show as Nottingham takes on Trenton. Vince Reed, Chris Armour have the call for you. And on Saturday, 1.45 on 107.7 The Bronx, it will be West Winter Plainsboro South taking on Steiner. Sean Lerman will have all the play-by-play -play for you in that game on the WBCB Sports Network. Things kick off Friday night here on the AM at 4.30. It'll be the High School Coaches Roundtable Show. That's looking at things here on the Bucks County side of the river. 5.30, yours truly will be here with the High School Football Kickoff Show. Again, you'll be able to listen to that on 14.90 AM, previewing the action on both sides of the river. George and I kick off on the Bronx starting at 6.45 with the Trentonian pregame show as Hamilton takes on Notre Dame. Great to be with you once again here on the Mercer County Football Show. Thanks to our friends for bringing you the show, the St. Francis Medical Center, your heart hospital in the city of Trenton, and also by the Trentonian. Check them out online at trentonian.com. For Giorgio Gorman, Mike Samsel, we'll see you next week here on the Mercer County Football Show. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your football this weekend. Yeah, it should be fun. Week two should be very interesting.